Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and finally was able to watch this particular movie and it's the fifth and I guess the very last Indiana Jones movie in this franchise starring Harrison Ford because if they want to continue, I guess they'll have to reboot it, find somebody else to play the role. But that's the end for Indiana, I guess. He is 80 years old, Harrison Ford. So I don't think you can actually shoehorn him in another movie unless you do it very quickly. But I am disappointed. I was hoping for a really good send-off. Was the movie is good in places, but I do not like a lot of things in the movie. I guess you can say that it's probably possibly me having expect certain expectations and them not being really fulfilled. And uh, I find it a little odd that they went that route, but what can I say? So, came out in 2023, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, an American action, adventure, and sci-fi in this movie, just like the previous ones. Uh, and this one is directed by James Mangold, who is a pretty awesome director, to be honest. I'm just checking to see what movies I've seen that I've seen, especially the uh, uh, Logan and uh, the Wolverine, so he's got a very good reputation. You have Harrison Ford coming back. As Indiana Jones, John Rhys Davis, John Reese Davis, returning as Sarah, and Karen Allen plays a very small role as uh, Marion Ravenwood, his estranged wife in this movie, because they got married at the end of the last one. You also have new characters played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Antonio Banderas, which he himself says is a glorified cameo, and you've got uh, Toby Jones, Boyd Holbrook. Uh, Ethan Isidore and Mads Mikkelsen and Mads Mikkelsen is always good especially within his roles but even otherwise you see him in a movie he is going to give you a good performance and basically it's set in 1969 Indy is retiring he is returning from his role as a as a professor <coughs> excuse me he's given a send off and he lives kind of a very lonely existence in an apartment uh, where it's just him, he's the cranky old man fighting with some teenagers or young people in a, in a room, in, in, an in, a, in another apartment nearby, in the same building. Uh, the son has passed away, uh, so Mutt Williams has passed away in Vietnam, so there's that sad ending and basically took a toll on the marriage. So they both have separated and there's, you see the papers of like, the legally separation. And that's why you don't actually see Marion throughout the film except for the very end. So this is also the first movie that neither Steven Spielberg nor George Lucas is, uh, you know, it, they're not really, it's not directed or the story is not conceived by George Lucas. Uh, they both are executive producers instead. Uh, and of course it has been, it's been delayed quite a bit because I think I, I think I heard about this movie in 2019 and 2020, early 2020 maybe or 2019 and then of course the pandemic has delayed it quite a bit. We start off with a pre with a, a prologue as to Indiana Jones, a much younger at that time, along with his friend Basil Shaw, fellow archaeologist. Uh, they are trying to retrieve the lands of longliness from a castle in the French Judge, again going off with uh, Nazis. And that's where they meet uh, astrophysicist Jürgen Wohler. Uh, who was working for the Nazis, they find uh, the uh, the Dial of Destiny, basically the Antikythera, Antikythera, how do you pronounce it, Antikythera mechanism, which is supposed to uh, reveal time fissures so you can actually possibly go through time, time travel, basically. So uh, they manage to get out, get escape from the train that where they are held as prisoners and uh, they get uh, one half of the dial, uh, but the rest is, and the other one is with Wola. And in 1969, uh, as I said, the retiring Professor Henry Jones in New York City, uh, very depressing to see that, to be honest. And uh, he is, uh, you know, planning, just thinking of what he's going to do in retirement, almost living all alone. When he is met by uh, he's visited by his goddaughter, 
archaeologist Helena Shaw, who is uh, is good friends, Basil Shaw's daughter, and he is, Basil is from Pasco Lake. So uh, she wants to research the dial. He takes him to where the, uh, the, post, the portion that he has is actually there, but that's where the CIA, uh, a rogue section of the CIA uh, with a baller who now goes by Dr. Schmidt, who's a, a NASA scientist, and his kind of like henchman, along with the, his uh, boy Allwood's character, he doesn't speak much in the movie, to be honest. Kleber, so he's a very trigger happy, you know, you know gun happy guy. Uh, they actually uh, kill off some other people trying to frame Henry for it and steal the device, but uh, Helena has got her own plans and she escapes with it. Uh, he manages to escape and then with the help of Salah he goes to uh, Morocco in Tangiers where he cap he confronts Helena trying to sell it at a private auction and uh, they have to escape uh, with her te teammate sidekick. This is an attempt to recreate the dynamics that they had that Henry Jones had with uh, short round but this doesn't work as much. Uh, the sidekick is named Teddy Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy uh, played by uh, Ethan Isidore and uh, yeah so all very to cut short they end up in Sicily pursued by Wallo and his team they find the year of Dionysus cavern where Archimedes tomb is there going on through the sticky stuff uh, and uh, you know insects and all the stuff reminiscent of temple of the temple of doom they find Archimedes' uh, tomb and in that they find a 20th century wristwatch on his the remains of his skeleton which is odd so that is a sign that possibly he has traveled through time or somebody has traveled through time and given the watch and uh, they they are captured and uh, Mola has his got his plans he wants to go back to 1939 and depose Hitler and then take over, lead Germany to, win, to victory in World War II. So that's the entire plan. So they, at an airfield, they find this time, they locate this time fisher using the device, which has since been uh, reunited with the other piece. And they go through it. Uh, Teddy is, of course, a pilot. And he follows back in another plane. Uh, well, Helena still stores, stores away on the other plane. Uh, on the one that they've got uh, Wola with Indy as the uh, uh, as the prisoner and he's shot on the shoulder by the way. They go through the fissure and then they find themselves in 12, two, sorry, 212 BC at the siege of, uh, siege of Syracuse and uh, the plane crashes killing all, all of them except for uh, Elena and uh, Indy who they escape via parachute. The soldiers actually believe that it's a dragon and that they did it. Teddy and uh, there's a pilot uh, along with him who, in the other plane who they managed to land safely and they want to take Indy and uh, Helena back before the fissure closes so that they can go back to their own time when they meet Archimedes and Archimedes uh, try, and they try talking to him and Indy doesn't want to go back. Indiana Jones wants to stay back because he's, he's an archaeologist for him. He studies history. So for him, this is fascinating and he doesn't feel like he's got anything back in his own time waiting for him. Nothing to look forward to, so he decides he wants to stay back. But Helena tells him that she cannot let him stay. It might cause a time paradox. Archimedes does keep the watch uh, from, uh, from Google. I forgot from Google. I think from Bola. Yeah, from Bola. And it's kind of sad when you see this is what uh, Indiana Jones is led to, like he wants to stay and finally she, you know, Helena gets a little emotional but she, she knocks him out unconscious, drags his ass back onto the plane. The four of them, which is Teddy herself, uh, Indiana Jones and the pilot who was, who was there, there, for the, <laughs> there, for the, there for the ride, they take him back and he awakens back in his apartment and he meets Helena, Teddy, Salah, Salah's grandchildren, 
uh, they brought groceries and stuff along with Marion who is now they reunite and as the others leave the apartment you can see uh, Indiana Jones and Marion having a tender moment and then that's how the movie ends so they decide to come back together so I suppose they live their rest of their lives together and thus ends the the legend of Indiana Jones. So there's a few things I didn't like about the movie. Like I mentioned before, I did like the ending part of, of that particular thing, but the fact that he wanted to stay back, uh, the fact that he was alone for all this time, they killed off Mutt, Mutt Williams. Now look, I, I guess they couldn't get uh, Shia LaBeouf back off, I know that he's got some problems. So they kind of like had to kill him off screen Instead, they could have just said that he was off at war or he was doing something else. But they had to make it very, very uh, tragic for for uh, for Indiana and for Marion. I would have preferred that he has, he has become a grandfather now. And, uh, you know, he has been taken for his ride on the one last, sorry, one last adventure before he settles into a life of retirement from the university and from his role uh, as this adventurous adventure seeker because of his goddaughter who steals his device. That would be much more interesting and uh, we could, I would have wanted to see Marion uh, in more involved in this movie, not just the small cameo towards the end. Even uh, Antonio Banderas' character as a friend of Indiana who helps them to retrieve uh, some of the retrieve a device from under the ocean is also you know a very small role although salad does have a much better role in this uh, yeah there's a few things i did not like about it so it's also a little bit dull to be honest it it isn't the best indiana jones movie uh now before i close out this video i'll tell you my rating for this movie and i'll tell you where it stands in my list of five indiana jones movie Number one is, yes, because I said that in the previous video as well, but number one is going to be uh, Indiana Jones and the Ra Raiders of the Lost Ark. Number two is going to be Indiana Jones and, uh, what was that movie? Uh, the, sheesh, damn it. Why do I forget these names? <laughs> uh, Indiana Jones and uh, The Last Crusade, sorry. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is my third favorite. Fuck you, I don't care about what your ratings are. Yours rating is yours, but this is mine. So that's number, that's three. This one, Dial of Destiny, would be number four. And of course, least and always going to be least is definitely. That's my rating. You can have yours. You can have your list. Right? So that's basically it. I will give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. Kind of disappointing. And that's where it stands, and thus ends my review of all five Indiana Jones movie. Have a good night.